Let's talk about the x-intercepts of a polynomial function. Remember that the x-intercepts of any graph is when y equals 0. And since we're talking about functions, this specifically means when f of x equals 0. So we want to know what the x-intercepts are. All we have to do is take our function. So suppose we have p of x equals x minus 3 times x plus 4. If I want to know what the x-intercepts are of this function, all I have to do is replace the p of x with 0. And then we can use what we've already learned about the zero product rule to say that, well, that means x is 3. Let's do that again. x minus 3 equals 0. And x plus 4 equals 0. Here's where our minus 3 or a positive 3 comes in, because we're going to add 3 to both sides, which gives us x equals 3. And on the other side, we subtract 4 and get x equals minus 4. Again, remember the shortcut is you take whatever this is change its sign, and then divide by whatever's in front here. So that's how I jumped to that 3 so quickly. So our x-intercepts for this problem are the point, the values of x equals 3 and x equals minus 4. Or we could write these as a point, 3, 0, and minus 4, 0. Now, this x-intercept is so important, it's got a different name. We also call this the root or zero of the function. And so a root or a zero is the value that gives a zero, the input value that gives a zero output. So let's look at a few more. Suppose f of x equals x plus 2 times x minus 5. So again, we replace the zero equals x plus 2, x minus 5. Solve the two separate equations, or use the shortcut, and end up with x equals minus 2 and x equals 5. So there is our correct roots, our correct zeros, or our correct x-intercepts. One more example. Suppose we have g of x equals x times x minus 3 times x plus 2. Here we have three x's, so we're going to end up with three zeros. The first one's easy, we just get x equals zero. The second one, if we use our shortcut, we just take the minus three and make it a positive three, and since there's nothing in front of the x, it just stays as a three, because that's what makes this zero. And the second one, we can do the same thing, get x equals minus two. So here we have three answers, because we have one, two, three separate x's. So that's finding the x-intercepts or finding the zeros of a polynomial function.